What's up guys, it's uh, Vinny here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a YouTube video on uh, installing a turbo inlet hose, <clears throat> which is uh, seen right here. This is a Perrin um, turbo inlet hose. And then we also have uh, Mishimoto uh, intercooler hoses and stuff. Um, I'm just replacing those as well because the ones that I have, I mean, they're getting old. The car's a 2006 with around 130,000 miles now. So, uh, and you have to take the intercooler off uh, to get this turbo inlet out. So, um, just wanna show you guys before we get into it. Um, <clears throat> turbo inlet hose comes off of your intake. The turbo inlet hose itself is what this, all this attaches to. Um, well, this is actually part of your stock one, it's plastic and it turns into like rubber as you get into here and a lot of common problems with Subarus um, as they get older <clears throat> see if I can get a good shot if I zoom in here you can see you can see that crack down in there um, where it attaches to your turbo you can it's kind of hard to see but you can kind of get an idea of uh, it, it there you go, there, there you can kind of see it. There's a huge rip in it right there. And um, that's pulling in extra air after your mass airflow sensor, which will cause your car to misfire and stutter. My car sometimes, when you accelerate it, uh, it sounds like, or it feels like, like, it, like it, it doesn't have enough fuel. And that's because it's actually running too lean. It's taking in extra air in after the mass airflow sensor. So to fix that, I got a new turbo inlet. Um, I'm gonna try to make this video as descriptive as I can as I usually do with all my videos so just bear with me um, and yeah so all right let's get all into right, it guys so first step is remove your negative battery terminal um, second step is going to be to remove your intake to remove your intake you're gonna pop these hoses up um, disconnect your mass airflow sensor um, you're going to take or loosen this clamp and then with an SPT intake, there is a, there, there's this bracket right down here you can see. Um, I just took the bolt off of that. Um, then basically this should be free. You should be able to just slide this hose right off. All right, once you get your intake out, <clears throat> um, what I did is I just, if you have that, if you have an SPT or another aftermarket intake, I just put the nut right back down on the uh, bolt so you don't lose it. Um, you won't be able to reinstall your intake until you remove that out of the way anyways. So just just kind of, you know, trying to keep stuff where you know you're not going to lose it. Um, next thing you're going to do is remove the alternator cover. Um, there's a 10 millimeter bolt in here and a 10 millimeter nut that goes on here. So just be careful um, taking that off. Alright guys, next step is going to be to remove the connecting lines that goes to the old turbo inlet. So this is very important because if you mix these up, your car will not run correctly. So I'm just going to give you a, you know, uh, a quick thing how I'm going to do it. Um, let's see if I can, there you go, okay. So I di disconnected this big hose here from the top of my inlet and uh, this little one off the nipple of your intake right now this for now I, I'm just gonna leave it I can just keep this to the side for right now I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna have to exactly take this all out I might be able to just leave it sit there so that way when the when the intake uh, the turbo and lets back in I can get, just reconnect this back and reconnect it back there and I don't have to worry about figuring out which goes where and all that stuff because there's a couple things that this goes to all right, guys, um, once you get some of the uh, hoses off of the turbo inlet, I pulled this one off here, uh, that one off there, and then there was this, this other one up here that goes to your intercooler. Um, I just popped that off, and I just slid that out of the way for now. Um, we can get back to that in a little bit. We're going to uh, have to take off the <clears throat> intercooler now. So what I had to do was you take the two 12-millimeter bolts off of your ball valve, um, you're going to have a 12 on each side of the inner cooler and then um, you're going to have to loosen this, um, loose, well loosen these hose clamps and also since since I was taking that off I already got new, like a new one, a uh, new hose for that and a new Y pipe under it 
and then along the back also. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my intercooler. Right, and also, um, if I didn't make it clear enough, these two hose clamps, as well as this hose clamp down at the bottom, just make sure you don't forget that one because you're not gonna be able to get it off, you know, without getting that. And if you do get it off without getting that off, you're gonna rip your Y pipe if you don't have a new one. So just be sure that one down there too, and these two. All right, guys, once you get your intercooler out, um, well, I already pulled it out, but uh, you're going to basically have to finagle it out. I kind of uh, seen that it helped lifting it from the right side, kind of peeling it this way off a little bit to get it off of the front, and then pulling it up maybe towards the driver's side a little bit to get it off of the turbo. So I'm going to go ahead and place that on the ground down there. And then just make sure you don't forget to grab your extra hose clamps you can pull this off you don't have to but I'm, I'm changing it so put that right, there. guys once you get the uh, once you guys get the inner cooler off we're gonna go down and you're gonna pop this PCV hose off of here um, and there's there's just this little hose clamp I slid it down um, once you get that off you're gonna have to get this white piece off of this elbow that attaches to the turbo inlet now to do that say this is all attached you're gonna push this clip down right here and then you're gonna get a flathead let's see if I can focus this you're gonna go right behind the white piece and you're gonna pry it off with like the flathead like that while you're holding this tab down right you're pushing that down which lifts it up which makes it so you can unclick it okay now this is a I forget what it's called I think it's like a leak a PCV leak deten uh, detection uh, sensor, or something like that. Um, I've read online, I've, I've watched a couple of videos, people say that they don't really work or that there's no sensor actually in it. I don't know what that means. So don't take my word for it, but uh, I watched another guy, he pulled these pins out, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. Um, and then I'll let you know how that goes. All right guys. Um, so this is how to remove these pins. Let me just lay my phone down here. All right, cool. Let's see if it'll focus in. All right, you see those pins in there? We're just gonna go ahead and stick our needle nose in there. Well, there you go, okay. So that's what the pin looks like. So now, to show you guys, uh, you know, to explain what I was talking about, about how the sensor doesn't, it's not really a sensor. This is really just a loop back. Um, all this does is it just sends a signal to that sensor that was there and then it just literally sends it back. There's no actual sensor, it's just this metal pin. So what I'm gonna do is get this metal pin and stick it back in that connector right there. So I'll be right back. All right, so that's basically what it'll look like when it's all finished. Um, it's just basically a jumper wire. So we're gonna tape it up, um, tuck it out of the way. Another way you can uh, do this is if you guys wanted to cut this connector off and you could solder the two wires together. Uh, I just don't really feel like doing all that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up with the black electrical tape and then probably tuck it out of the way, maybe over there or something. It's pretty much useless at this point and it's not gonna be used in the uh, new install with the new turbo inlet. All right guys, just another shot from the passenger side. Um, this is the connector, taped it all up. And I'm just gonna keep it out of the way for now. Maybe when I'm done, maybe I'll just like tuck it in or something or tape it or zip tie it, I don't care, I don't know, something. But uh, yeah, so that's that part. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the turbo inlet itself. Show you guys that, that there's a little hole right there. You can see it's all swelled up. Um, this happens with a lot of Subarus, it's a really common thing. Um, so, all right, so next step is we're gonna well first thing you're gonna do is you know if you uh, loosen loosen this hose clamp on the turbo inlet and then you're gonna come over here and this is a six millimeter hex um, now it's like really difficult to get to what I found is start it under here and then slide it over you can kind of wiggle it in there and I already broke mine loose you can see it's already loose 
So it's just a matter of taking that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, before I actually take this fully out, I just wanted to show you. So, you know, I put it in here and I slid it over and worked my way in. But I would start it, if you have one like this, do it obviously like this, because if you can get it in there, so you get it in that hole, right? And then I had, I got a, a tiny little hammer. I held it up here and then I tapped it and made sure it was fully in. So that way, when you go to break it loose like this, it'll just, you know, break loose and you won't strip the inside out because you really don't want to strip the inside out on that. Um, if you are replacing it though with something aftermarket like this per in, um, this is no longer useless. So if this gets stripped out, um, what you can do is uh, uh, you can attempt to snap it off. I would just try to cut it off. You don't have to cut this whole screw off. You can literally just cut the plastic right here. It's pretty much useless at this point. But uh, we're going to remove it since, you know, mine's broken free and everything. It's just less, sh uh, less shit that's going to be in the way. So I'm going to remove it now. Just uh, trying to give you guys a few tips to help out. All right, once you guys get it out, you're going to have to push it out of the way like this hard to do it with one hand and then you're just gonna have to pull this bolt out um, I'm gonna have to do it you know not on camera I only got one hand right now but uh, basically you're just gonna have to wiggle this out and like I said if this plastic piece breaks off while you're doing it it's not a big deal this is trash anyways so uh, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you, show you after all right so it's a little easier than I thought it was going to be to get this out um, just so you guys know it has a metal thing on it this came out with it doesn't matter but uh basically when when this bolt was in that hole it was or it was sticking out <clears throat> see if the best way to show you this would be I had my pliers okay I had gotten my pliers uh, stuck on the back right right here and then the, the this top piece up here that I'm wiggling was squeezing the bolt and it kind of just pushed it right out. Um, and my bolt actually just came through under here. You can kind of see a little bit. Got a little scraped up, no biggie. Pulled the bolt right out of here. Uh, once it was like almost all the way through, I let go of the pliers up there. I just grabbed the bolt head, pulled it straight out. All right, um, so once that's out, get that screw out. We're gonna come ahead. This extension connects right to where that hose clamp's at. I'm just gonna go and loosen that up a little bit like that. Great. Always nice to have extensions. I mean, that one's a little excessive, but you know, it works. And then from here, we're basically gonna be working our way of, you know, trying to get this uh, tur the old turbo inlet out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and kind of show you, uh, see if I can show you real quick with the screwdriver. We can actually start by getting a flathead back here and, and begin sliding off um, the turbo right here. And you might wanna, yeah, I'm gonna have to do this with two hands, but uh, yeah, basically you're gonna start pulling that out. So I'm gonna begin doing that and then I'll explain how I'm doing it on the way of getting it out. All right, so um, the first thing I just removed was this, actually this right here, this little black elbow, um, which goes right in here. You could just kind of rip that off. So I ripped that off. And um, since I'm also, since I re uh, got the hoses to replace, um, this hose that goes up to the block valve off of the turbo inlet. I'm just going to, I'm either gonna cut this or just kind of pry it off. Um, this is a pinch clamp, the ones where you have to squeeze them. So, and, and for some reason, mine's like on the bottom of it. I don't even know if you can see, there it is, right there. Yeah, so um, however you guys can manage to get that off, I'll let you know how I do once I do get it off. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but I'm going to go for it. Alright guys, uh, what I ended up doing was removing this tube by just cutting this out. I, I have a new one. You don't need to actually cut this. If you are planning on using the stock one, 
and saving it, you're gonna get a, a pry bar. All right, you're gonna stick it behind here and you're gonna just have to work it off. And it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's gonna take a little bit, but be careful you don't break this clip right here. I mean, you don't really need that, but uh, you can actually remove that if you wanted to take out this, I think it's a 12. But uh, just work work this off. You're gonna have to get this off either way. Um, I'm gonna, I'll be back once I remove this off. All right, real quick, before this actually comes all the way off, I had it, let me show you. I had the pry bar like this. Let me see. There you go, you can kind of see it a little better. Had it like this, and then I turned it something like this, and I shoved it like back behind down in here and then and then I was able to get under it a little bit like back like that and it's pretty much it's pretty much off right now Let's see if I can just pull this off with my fingers maybe not Let's see if I can show you this a little better there you go and the reason that came off a little hard was because it has that lip and the clamps on there, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that piece out. All right, and I don't really need that anymore anyways. Like I said, I got a new one, but leave that over there for now. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove uh, this piece right here. It's, it's like a rubber piece that comes off, so you can just cut this off. I mean, this whole piece is useless at this point. So we can just start cutting it. So I'm gonna get my pair of dikes. I'm gonna slip it under this, right under this bracket. And then kind of work it in there like that. So it's around there. And I'm literally just gonna be like cutting it. Okay, so, and I already cut a, a big piece of it off. So now I'm gonna attempt to just basically rip it off. Sorry about this camera. There you go. Like that. We don't need that. That This whole tube's pointless. And um, when you put this new one on, so you guys know, the reason I'm ripping all these, all, I'm ri the reason I'm ripping all that off is just because we're just trying to get this out. The new one, you don't have that problem. See, there's, there's just these pieces. They're a lot shorter. And then what attaches to them is these black pieces which you can insert once this is in so you don't need to worry about breaking these pieces off trying to get it back in and all that so that's what we're going to go ahead and do i removed the side one here um might even try to cut might even try to cut this one off i mean the more the, the smaller you can get this piece this this turbo inlet the easier it will be to pull out so uh, this is pretty useless right here, too. Might, cut, might try to cut that off. Other than that, um, I mean, I could break this one off. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, next thing is I managed to... I tried to get this off with pliers. wasn't going, so I stuck the flathead through it, and I pulled it up a little bit. Just careful not to stab your wires, and just be conscious that you're... When you're pulling up on this... This, this whole uh, turbo in that tube is going along this metal line, so you don't want to go too hard. I just did it enough just to bend it. And then when it was bent up like that, I had gotten my dikes and just began snipping away at it. And now, as you can see, it's pretty much broken off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and completely take that off. All right, so I just broke it off. Um, an advantage to having a screwdriver stuck through it, if you are deciding to remove this, which you don't have to, but, uh, an advantage to having that screwdriver in there is, is you won't drop it down in your engine bay um, as easily. So we we'll go ahead and put that over there. We don't really need that anymore. Um, so the reason I, I removed that was because now it can slip onto that wire real easy like that. And if you're getting hung up on the back here, you basically get your flat head and stick it and just you know, stick it behind here and just start prying the uh, hose clamp with the hose off. So then you basically just start 
start wiggling out. I'm doing this with one hand. I mean, that's pretty much how easy this part is. A lot of times people get stuck here, like I am. So, like I said, if you can cut this off, which I haven't yet, I might just, you know, might just go ahead and cut that off real quick. It'll come right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Actually, before cutting this off, I just realized I can just slip this over like that. There you go. That's the old turbo inlet. I'm just gonna do a little quick side-by-side -side action. Show you what you're working with. So this one is a little bit fatter, but you don't have all of these big ass things sticking off right now, you know? Um, and the problem with this old turbo inlet is this is what happens to it. Look, this is actually soaked. So, I mean, that's not really, that's a really bad sign. There might be something leaking. Um, this happens to a lot of them. A lot of Subarus have these issues. Um, and right here, this, this crack right here was where all that air was getting in after the uh, mass airflow, which was not good. That's, that's causing misfires in the car, you know, under acceleration, it started hesitating a little bit, like shaking. If you guys have that issue, definitely check into this because uh, this was actually the last place I looked. And of course, this went bad, so. Okay, now we're gonna go and put this one on. All right guys, so uh, now I'm uh, in the middle of putting it back in. Um, some people, where this silver thing is, if they, it depend, depending on which aftermarket um, turbo that you have, you can trim off some of the rubber. In my case, it didn't, it, that's just how it is. It's just, it's like glued in there, it's seated. Um, so you cannot remove that piece to trim it shorter. Um, when you when you get it when you first start it in that silver piece you're gonna have to work your way under this wire and you're basically just gonna be you know trying to figure out which angle you need to get it at to get it in there and you also got to keep an eye on the back of this 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 tube right here you have to keep pulling it up keep pulling it up with your fingers as you're pushing the um, back of the turbo or the front of this turbo and let in so and it's it's gonna kind of twist in it's kind of hard to show you I'm not gonna be able to do it while I'm holding my camera so as I work it in there um, I can just kind of show you where I'm at with it um, right now this this little nub has to get behind this this metal um, power steering line <clears throat> and so I'm just gonna have to keep massaging it in pushing pushing it in here while pulling up um, on on this part, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, guys. So this is a pain in the ass. So uh, what I what I you know remembered a little trick from when I was at the dealership. Uh, get some heavy duty silicone spray, and uh, I sprayed it right around right around here, right right around this piece, um, around this metal thing. I also got in there and sprayed it along the top, I don't know if you can see this, of the intake and all over this tube a little bit. It won't hurt, it won't hurt this tube at all. Um, and spraying, spraying that will just help it kind of slip in. It literally slipped, once I sprayed it, it slipped right by. I mean, it, that just, that was just so much easier. So, um, and also, you know, you might have to guide it a little bit with a pry bar. Don't, don't be trying to stick it in holes like this and ripping them and shit you, that you're gonna you're gonna destroy your new uh, turbo inlet so you know you just got to work in there it'll take a little while to get it in there but probably took me a good five minutes straight of just you know spraying it and trying to twist it and get it in the right angle it's a pain in the ass but you'll get it in there believe so me. once you have it almost it's pretty much against it you're actually gonna pull it back a hair you're gonna want to pull it back enough to where you can slide this clamp on you don't want to forget your clamp. If you forget your clamp, you're gonna have a bad time. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna slide this and let tube backwards. Slide the uh, clamp over this tube somewhere. Figure it out. I don't know if I want to sit it on here yet or on here. Probably on the tube as long as I don't have it, you know, catching up on here. And then, uh, yeah, 
All right, guys, this part's really, really, really tricky. So I managed to get the turbo inlet, uh, you know, the end of it right on the turbo snout, right on the, right on the end. So what I ended up having to do was I sprayed some of that silicone stuff around both the end of the turbo and the tube. And with a pry bar, I put it along, like right where that brown is, kind of actually even here too. And I'm pulling, I'm pulling on it, or pushing on it, whichever way will make the turbo inlet go this way. Now while doing that, I also had a flat head, um, kind of, kind of like this at an angle. Let's see, I'm not trying to knock it back off, but uh, and I was, I was, I was, I got it through, and I pushed the passenger side of this tube down here on first, because uh, it's like a really far stretch. You'd really, you know, it's you're coming in at a really weird angle, and it wants to just sit off over to here, but you got to move it over. So as I did that, I got the lip around, and once I got this side around, I started pushing on it a little bit. And then I worked, I worked the top on in the side, and it looks like the, uh, I don't know if I can show you on here, it looks like the bottom kind of just sat itself on. So once you pretty much have it on, you keep pushing it and wiggling it up and down and you'll see it start to slide in. So at this point, I'm just gonna make sure I get this, um, this metal clamp over top of this first as I'm pushing it in, just so you know, you're not fighting against the clamp and you don't smush the clamp in between and then you're screwed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that clamp over top of the uh, inlet. All right guys, uh, next what I had to do was make another, a new hose actually, that came down there, that, that's a PCV, that goes into the um, turbo inlet. So you just gotta cut a hose that'll you know fit it without uh, kinking um, with the Perrin um, turbo inlet they gave me a hose and I just had to cut it to the right length and then I also like it seemed like it was started to kink a tiny bit I mean it's a big hose granted and it's just air going through but um, I, I just got pliers like this and just kind of gave it a couple squeezes to make sure you know it would settle normal and that it wouldn't be kinking anywhere so um, again yeah do that and um, don't forget um, your hose clamps now down here I didn't think I needed one I'll probably I don't know I may regret it later I may not it's really tight the hose that he gave me um, I mean I really had to work that thing on there I know over time it will eventually you know become looser and then uh, for the other side, get over here and show you. So I can put a hose clamp on here just to, you know, make sure it stays on that little um, black elbow. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, guys. So I actually found uh, another extra hose clamp. So I put it down there. And the other one is right here. So that part is finished. Now we're gonna get ahead and begin. I'll, I'll put these other ones in and we can uh, connect those hoses. All right guys, I actually ended up finding a second hose clamp. So I put one on the bottom down there just for peace of mind and uh, another one up here. So that's all finished. We're gonna come over to this intercooler and I'm going to remove the stock, uh, stock Y pipe here. Um, just this, this piece, this is all, you know, crap, all old. And we will install the new one right here, like so. All right, guys, uh, this is what it looks like when it's on. Got my hose clamps on both ends. Um, don't forget when you are putting your intercooler back on to slide a hose clamp on here because you're gonna have to clamp it down to your turbo, and if you forget that, you're screwed. So don't forget that. Um, all right, it looks like I'm just gonna double check everything. You know, make sure your vacuum lines are together, your PCV is back together. Um, 
All your hose clamps are on for where you needed them, which is pretty much almost everywhere. And yeah, so we're gonna lay the intercooler back on now. And we'll see, we'll see what we gotta do after that. All right, now before you bolt on your intercooler, you're gonna put on this hose and you're gonna clamp it down. So what we're gonna basically do is slide this tube into the hose first and then you're gonna push it left and you're gonna basically get this Y pipe thing to connect right into your turbo. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Also one thing, uh, don't forget to just sit another clamp on here for, you know, for the other side, so forgot to mention that. All right guys, so the intercooler is on. Um, I had put the uh, blow off valve hose down here on with a clamp, clamped that down. Um, of course, you know, made sure my blow off valve uh, bolts are torqued. Um, you have a vacuum line that goes right onto there. I'll put a zip tie on that in a minute. <clears throat> um, you have well, one bolt on each side of the, <clears throat> uh, what's it called, of the intercooler. And after that, I also connected the hoses for the intercooler lines up here and over here. Now this one that's missing is the piece that we had taken off earlier. Now that's going to go, I believe, like this into here and then down into an elbow to there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now that everything's tight, your blow off valve, um, you attached all of your lines, zip tied them or used clamps, whichever you prefer. Um, we're gonna start installing these things into, the, like these elbow things, into the turbo inlet. So the first one goes obviously right here. And uh, this one is your boost control solenoid return. So with mine, the way mine was set up, if, um, well, I'll push that all the way in in a minute. But um, if I look at my old one, it was capped off and I already had taken off the, uh, uh, it had a uh, zip tie on it. Let me see if I can get this off. Okay, so it's a, uh, mine, mine was just plugged, okay? So basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna push this all the way in. I'm going to put the plug over it, like so. I'm gonna push it all the way in. And then once it's all the way on, I'm gonna zip tie that and you know insert that all the way. All right, so now you got that one in. Now the next one is your EVAP solenoid return, which uh, it's kind of hard to see behind here. It's this one right here. Okay, and that's going to attach to this black piece and go right into the intake and then down and back around. So that's that one. Make sure this isn't kinked, you know, see? Kind of how to give it a little bit of extra so it won't kink right here. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, let me see. And then, yeah, we already put the one in back here. All right. Um... Yeah, so next thing I think we're gonna do is put the intake on. All right guys, um, so the intake is back on. Um, the bolt down there is tight and you're gonna need a extra hose clamp here. I had to go find one, so I just kind of took a break, came back, it's kind of dark out now. Um, so everything else is pretty much in place. Um, just like I said, make sure everything has a hose clamp. Every hose clamp is tight and that you double checked every single bolt. Um, I'll just go over and show you again where these things go, where these uh, elbows go. So mine's blocked off. <clears throat> um, that's your boost control solenoid return. Um, okay, so under here, this elbow right there, you can see it, comes right onto here. And then on the back, of this thing is is this tube right here that connects to your intake. Um, I'm just gonna try to get you some good angles. Pause it as you please. And the back down here, we have the elbow. I don't know if I can get a good. Uh, there we go. The elbow's right here. 
that line connects straight down to there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, everything else is connected, everything's tight. It's time to uh, put the alternator cover back on and then start her up. All right, so uh, this is what it looks like with the alternator cover on. Last thing, don't forget to plug in your mass airflow sensor. Um, once you got that on, it is officially complete. Time to start the car now and see if it runs. <laughs> Cross your fingers. All right, let's uh, jump in and start her up. Oh, sounds great. Idling a tiny bit high. Let's see. Okay, it's dropping. All right, good, good, good. Uh, boost pressure, or well, vacuum is at negative 20, right where it should be. Oil pressure, obviously, we didn't really touch anything there. Good, and uh, the water temp and oil temp, obviously, cold. Car's still cold. Um, no check engine light, no other lights. Let's just come around to the front. Listen for, uh, you want to go and listen for hissing noises and anything like that. Um, I'm going to go test drive the car now and just make sure everything, uh, you know, drives normal and, you know, under acceleration it doesn't stutter anymore and all of that. So, uh, this is your last chance to just look around your engine bay, make sure you don't leave any tools laying around. Um, yeah, so. That was basically uh, the full video, guys. Um, if you guys have any other questions, just uh, leave a comment um, or message me. Um, I'm, I'm very glad that I went with uh, Corinne and uh, Mishimoto for the turbo inlet and the uh, intercooler hoses. Uh, I've, all, I've heard nothing but really good reviews for both of them, so I definitely recommend them. Um, a lot of my friends use them. That's kind of why I chose them. They've never had issues, and I don't expect to have any issues either. So, um, yeah. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to go take this for a test drive. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Later.